I know, I know, Mahindra isn't really on your new car radar, but stay with me because the Indian brand reckons this is the car that will change all that. It's a diesel powered six seat large SUV, and the brand reckons it's good on road, but even better off it, thanks to its ute like chassis and its proper four wheel drive systems. So, is this then a cut price alternative to diesel powered four wheel drives from Ford, Mitsubishi, and Toyota? And will it really put Mahindra on the map here in Australia? Let's go find out. But first, make sure you check out carsguide.com.au to read my full review on this car and thousands of others just like it. In the large diesel-powered four-wheel drive space, the Scorpio is something of a bargain. Even if it is more medium SUV sized in real terms, only really qualifying for the next size up on something of a technicality based mostly on its height rather than its length. The range opens with the Scorpio Z8, which scores 18-inch alloy wheels, LED front lighting, including sequential indicators, DRLs and fog lamps, and a sunroof. The only interior treatment available is a coffee-coloured leatherette, and there's an 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. A second smaller screen in the driver's binnacle, USB-A and USB-C charging in the first and second rows, and twin-zone climate control. Stepping up to the top-spec Scorpio Z8L adds a 12-speaker Sony stereo, wireless device charging, a six-way power driver's seat, and a bigger 7-inch colour display in the driver's binnacle. Now, Mahindra makes a big point about the Scorpio being designed in part by famed Italian studio Pina Farina, but expect no shouty supercar vibes here. Instead, the Scorpio is really kind of subtle in the way it approaches its design, with only the black plastic cladding that frames the whole vehicle, hinting at its adventure capabilities. Now, the lights are all LED, save for the brake lights at the rear. The alloys are 18 inches, and I even like this kind of new look front end, which is kind of both bold and subtle at the same time. It does, however, look a little small for a large SUV, right? And that becomes even more apparent when you climb into the third row. Life in the Scorpio is all about location, 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 especially in the first two rows where room is ample. Personally, I'm a fan of the six-seater setup. Sure, it's not quite as practical as a proper seven-seater, but surely you've got two kids in the back seat. You want them to be as far away from each other as possible, don't you? And the other benefit is that adults can sit in here in genuine comfort. Now, unfortunately, it's a slightly different story here in the third row where it is a bit tighter. At 175 centimeters, I'm no giant. My knees are pressing pretty firmly into the seat in front of me, and at the wrong angle, my head also connects with the roof lining. If you're in any taller than me, you're in a world of hurt back here. It really is a space for kids only. Now, with this third row in place, there's not a huge amount of boot space, as you can see the boot door pretty much juts up against that third row, but it has got a couple of party tricks. You can fold this seat flat to get a little bit more space in the back, or you can even rock it all the way forward to really maximize room between the floor and the ceiling. Now there's only one interior option available across the entire Scorpio range and it's this kind of mocha colored faux leather treatment but it all feels really quite nice under the touch actually save for the use of some hard plastics and while the tech can be a little basic in its operation at times it's all definitely passable too especially when you have your smartphone hooked up. There's only the one option here with both Scorpio models getting an all alloy 2.2 litre turbo diesel making 129 kilowatts and 400 newton meters. It channels that power through a good six speed automatic and then sends it onto the rear wheels. Four wheel drive here is a part time affair and you can shift between two wheel drive and four wheel drive high on the fly. You'll need to come to a stop and engage neutral to swap into four wheel drive low and a proper locking rear diff and some more high tech terrain modes means the Mahindra is solid off road too. Mahindra says you should see 7.2 litres per 100 kilometres on the combined cycle, with emissions pegged at 190 grams a kilometre of CO2. AdBlue is required here though, but you should be able to cover around 15,000 kilometres once that tank is filled. The Scorpio is fitted with a 57 litre fuel tank, which should deliver a driving range of around 800 kilometres. Now usually at this point we'd rattle off a long list of safety features, but not this time because well, frankly, the Scorpio doesn't really have any. Now, the brand says the high-tech stuff like AB, even Lane Keep Assist, is coming. will no doubt be here before 2025, but until then, you'll have to make do with fairly basic stuff. There's the usual braking and traction aids, of course. There's reversing cameras and parking sensors, and six airbags, including curtains, which don't quite cover the third row. So given the nature of this car, we're going to start this driving section with the off-road component. With me in the car is Chris, four-wheel drive expert. So if you hear another voice, it'll be his. If you hear another voice screaming, that'll probably be mine. So here we are at the Norwell off-road circuit. Now, I got to say, when they were explaining this car to us, Mahindra made a point of saying they wanted this launch to be 
Everest 2.0. They rang this company and said, whatever you did for the Ford Everest, do it for this because we think our car can compete. Now, as you know, they're pretty big shoes to fill. So let's see how the Scorpio holds up. So at the moment, we're just in two wheel drive, which is a rear wheel drive bias in this car, of course. We're just on grass, nothing too severe so far, but also we haven't encountered any problems. But this car does have a proper four wheel drive system with high and low range, which I'm sure we'll be introducing shortly. And I'll give you a quick example of why that's important. So we're parked upwards on a grassy hill here. It's pretty slippery and I'm in two wheel drive. I put my foot down, certainly no forward momentum. In fact, only sideways momentum. So then you engage four wheel drive high, which will of course engage all four wheels and should make getting up here, yeah, a whole lot easier. Now, of course, if you're a hardcore off-roader, you don't need me to explain any of this stuff to you, but Mahindra says this is really targeting the sort of middle Australia adventure families who maybe don't go off-road all that often, but when they, when they do, they want a car that does all the thinking and all the heavy lifting for them. And that's what the Scorpio is supposed to deliver. So we're still just tracking through the grass, through a couple of divots. There's not a huge amount of ground clearance on this car, especially compared to something like a Prado, but so far, so good. So we're at our first kind of challenge here, a fairly steep sort of dirt incline. We're in four wheel drive low. Just tackle it nice and slowly. Keep right a little bit here at the top. You can see it start to wheel spin and then find its grip. And then we're down and out. Oh. Down and out the other side. Now, honestly, that's about as hairy as I'd like to get on holidays. And I can report the Scorpio does it all pretty easy. All right, so this one's slightly gnarlier again. Lots of little divots. The car should get on quite a bit of tilt here. And again, in terms of what I personally would like to tackle on a holiday, this is about the extent of it. There we go. And we're through that. Oop, uh, through that with almost no problem at all. <laughs> so welcome then to the driver's seat of the Mahindra Scorpio. I'm gonna start this by listing some of the not so good things because to be honest, there really isn't that many of them. So first things first, at super low speeds, the steering is light, super light, feather light. Mahindra says that's designed to make this thing feel easy to maneuver not make it feel like you're wrestling it into parking spots but to me it just feels a little too vague a little too slack on center to inspire any kind of real confidence however it does harden up as you gather speed and actually there's a bit of feedback through the wheel too which is surprising in a vehicle in this segment the second thing is there is a unique quirk to the way that this car accelerates when you take your foot off the gas and then breathe back onto it you know like when you're trying to maintain speed on a highway for example it kind of kicks back in with this strange clunk that you feel not not just through your foot but through your leg and I haven't quite figured out what it is yet I'm sure there's a way to adjust your driving style over time so that you either don't notice it or it doesn't happen at all but I haven't quite figured that bit out yet and then the last item in my not so good column is actually the power. I just don't think there's quite enough of it. Now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't feel woefully underpowered either, but the 400 Newton meters on offer here just really isn't enough to get this really up to speed in a hurry. And I have a sneaky suspicion that overtaking maneuvers could be counted in minutes rather than seconds. But again, it doesn't feel desperately underpowered either. I just like to see it with 450, 475 Newton meters, something like that. It would just feel a little bit more drivable and reactive. And one last annoying quirk of this car, in fact, it might even be slightly more than a quirk, not only is it kind of lacking in active safety equipment, but the stuff it does have isn't always perfect. The curtain airbags don't extend all the way over the third row, for example, and it honestly has one of the worst reversing cameras I've ever experienced. It's super laggy. If there's even a ray of sunlight on it, it becomes very, very difficult to see. And even when you can see perfectly clear, it's still a little bit blurry, a little bit laggy, and again, just doesn't inspire a whole heap of confidence. 
But to be honest, that's about it for the not so good camp because there is a lot of stuff to really like about this car. It feels light years ahead of Mahindras that have come before it. Honestly, it offers a relatively refined, mostly quiet, largely smooth drive experience on the open road. It doesn't feel like a ute-based vehicle either. It feels really, really car-like. And they've made a big deal about how they've tried to iron out body roll out of this vehicle. And I gotta say, I've sat both in the front and the middle row and they've done a pretty solid job of it. The car stays as smooth and steady as you'd expect a car in this segment too. So with all of that in mind, this would be a relatively impressive car if it was just a family focused SUV at this price point. But when you also consider what it can do off road, as you saw before, we took it about as far off road as I'd ever really want to go on a holiday, to be perfectly honest, and it did it all with ease. But the point is, it doesn't seem to be too much of a compromise to be made when you're driving on the road either. It seems to handle both roles fairly well. I'm not sure it sets any benchmarks in any of those segments either, but it also doesn't feel like it's lagging behind the competition either. To be perfectly honest with you, it just doesn't feel like a Mahindra of old. This car is supposed to be a window into the brand's future, one that focuses more on urban families than it does on farm machinery. And if this car is the first of those to come, the signs are actually pretty good for Mahindra in Australia. Now the Mahindra Scorpio is covered by a seven year, 150,000 kilometer warranty and comes with seven years roadside assistance. There'll also be a cap price servicing program. The brand is still working out the details, but we'd expect it to run the full seven years with pricing yet to be confirmed. Honestly, this feels like a big step forward for Mahindra and they make absolutely no bones about this being the perfect time to strike. While most other car companies are plagued by massive delays and long order banks, Mahindra has made a point of saying they have enough of these in stock that you can order today and drive away tomorrow. So if you find yourself in a months or even years long queue for your next four wheel drive, maybe pop into your local Mahindra dealer. What you find there might surprise you. Now don't forget to check out carsguide.com.au for my review on this and all those other cars. There's also news, videos, advice pieces. If you like cars, you'll like that site.